what are debtor rights and protections? Well, a debtor is someone who owes money to someone else. Well, under the law, particularly in commercial contexts, a debtor has protections against being victimized when it comes to borrowing money or in the process of collecting a debt. So to start with, uh, there are several federal laws that protect a debtor's rights and limit the conduct of third parties or creditors. There are also many state laws on the books to the same point. In this video, we'll talk about the primary uh, debtor protection laws at the federal level. To start with, the Truth in Lending Act. Well, this act was made to protect a person who was going through the process of borrowing money from a lender. It requires various forms of disclosure and acknowledgments of understanding on the part of the debtor. This makes certain that the debtor is not fooled or misunderstanding in the terms of the loan and the provisions under which it has to be repaid. So that's the first law, the Truth in Lending Act. The second law is the Fair Credit Billing Act. Now this primarily applies to credit cards. That is, when an individual incurs a debt by using a credit card, the creditor, which is the credit card company that is paying on behalf of the credit card user, uh, must recognize the rights of the debtor to dispute charges that are allegedly invalid and must make specific disclosures in terms of the interest rate that is charged on the debt, the terms of collection, the terms of payment, things like that. So once again, you see a lot of provisions related to disclosure of the relationship between the creditor and the debtor and the various characteristics that, uh, that apply to the loan and the nature of the lending relationship. Okay? The Fair Debt Collection Practices Act is a bit different. It protects the debtor from collection methods that are deemed to be abusive. That is, things like calling at all hours of the night, um, badgering the person during their employment or throughout the day, uh, publicly announcing the debt in a way that seeks to shame or embarrass the person. So it sets all sorts of protections in place that allow the debtor to stop the creditor from seeking collection or undertaking certain types of collection efforts. So again, the first one, Truth in Lending, protects a debtor before incurring a debt. Uh, Fair Credit Billing Act protects a debtor once they have incurred a debt and they contest the validity of the debt in some way. And then the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act protects the debtor from abusive uh, collection efforts. The last one is bankruptcy protection. And bankruptcy is a regime designed to allow debtors who are unable to service their debt and do not see a way or are unable to overcome their debt so as to continue uh, being a financial contributor to society either individually or as a business. So it allows the individual to either liquefy their assets and then pay off whatever debt they can based upon the proceeds from that liquidation. And liquidation simply means selling off the assets. It also has the ability to uh, reorganize. The debtor has the ability to reorganize the debts based upon the individual's income. So secured debts must be paid off in full, but unsecured debts receive a percentage of whatever's left over after paying off the secured debts that are included in the bankruptcy estate. They uh, pay that off over a period of time, which is a maximum of seven years. And once that seven year period is there, the remainder of unsecured debt is forgiven. So anyway, this regime allows the debtor to once again, uh, establish solid financial footing. All of these laws together protect the debtor at various stages of the, the lending 
borrowing, collection, and uh, post-debt financial reorganization stages of, of the process. So with that being said, of course, there are other laws that apply, but these are the primary federal protections.